Johnny, a wandering, unemployed, misanthropic Mancunian, after a bout of rough sex which gradually transitions into sexual abuse, steals a car and drives all the way to London to re-enter his ex-girlfriend's, Louise's life, where she has attempted to distance herself from the ideological hellhole that Johnny has crawled from. After a vicious affair with Louise's housemate Sophie, an unemployed, vulnerable and emotionally dependent woman, Johnny tires of them completely and, contrasted with the dangerous misogynistic chauvinism and abuse of Jeremy, a young landlord with a fondness for the suffering of women, Johnny pursues misery on the streets of London. This is Mike Lee's challenging British realist classic Naked, starving David Fewless in a disturbingly magnetic performance as Johnny, a character that may just be one of British cinema's greatest monsters, a bastard on par with Malcolm McDowell in A Clockwork Orange as Alex Delarge, and Albert Finney in Saturday Night. Sunday morning as Arthur Seaton. Johnny is a deep well of hatred, misanthropy and nihilism, believing himself to be an intellectual willing to free others of the shackles of ignorance with his warped perspective on truth, but in reality Johnny hides and projects a deepened insecurity and vulnerability within himself onto others, even if he doesn't quite realise that's what he does, unable to free himself from his own inescapable sense of hopelessness and in a disturbing revelation. This is what makes Johnny his most unconventionally alluring. Peter Bradshaw, in his review of Naked, to celebrate its restoration and re-release from the British Film Institute, wrote about Johnny's intricate and elaborate nature and how impressive it is to conjure characterization this distinct through improvisation, writing that this film was the receptacle for some of the most sulphurous outpourings of fear and rage and non-compassion in Mike Lee's career and gave us a great monster of British cinema, the insufferable lippy wide boy and pseudo-intellectual Johnny, a character roiling internally with despair, with whom David Fewless made his horribly watchable breakthrough in a 132 minute guitar solo of a performance. Naked is another of the Dickensian grotesqueries that Mike Lee can create so fluently, and it is one of the great paradoxes of his career that despite devising them through improvisation, no other director makes films that sound so elaborately written. The sheer fanatical stamina of Johnny the Provoker, Johnny the Piss Taker, who won't stop until someone puts him in A&E, is awe-inspiring. There is also his impressively unrepentant behaviour at the end. I can't see it without thinking of the Seinfeld dictum. No hugging, no learning. All the time Johnny is talking, talking. Never once does he back down or come off it. He's always posturing or browbeating. And Johnny is a predator, an abuser whose evident anguish and self-hate does not entitle him to a moment of our pity. He is at the centre of a fiercely pessimistic story that is not leavened, as many of Lee's films are, with redeeming features. This is a movie of virtuoso nihilism and scorn, pure misery and hatred, with the melding of a masterful, densely researched performance from David Fewless and Mike Lee's brilliantly unconventional approach to writing. Mike Lee is renowned for beginning pre-production without a script, but only with a simple premise, working one-to-one -one with his actors to develop characters characters through improvisation, Peter Bradshaw suggests that Naked captures an essence that is so complex in character that it feels written. Johnny is a man who never learns from his mistakes, but he can incessantly question and chastise the actions of others, as if a desperate action to hide his own errors by highlighting the errors of anybody else. He is a deeply unpleasant, abusive individual, tugging at women's hair as a demonstration of supposedly powerful masculinity over vulnerable feminine he is an easy individual to disdain, but Johnny becomes more grey in his effortless ability to piss everybody off when he debates the existence of God and other philosophical and sometimes conspiratorial ponderings. While Johnny's views converge on the absurd, discussions of God being inherently bad, seemingly blasphemous, yet Johnny rationalises it by suggesting God has to be bad, as evil exists in the world and God is omnipotent, and if good exists, it only exists to fall at the hands of evil, and how humanity cannot comprehend its future, similar to the amoeba evolving into the frog, are surprisingly persuasive arguments to the extent that these discussions may bear a heavy, depressive and 
influence on viewers of a sensitive disposition. However, at his most persuasive, Johnny is still a twat. It is important to remember that his philosophical digressions and existential debates stem from a deep-seated insecurity to prove himself intellectually superior, insecurity hidden by narcissism, when in actuality, after being beaten to a bloody pulp, we see Johnny as his true vulnerable self, scared, timid, meek, childlike. He is an outsider pushed beyond the societal fringe, he doesn't do himself any favours, and constant stream of conscious toxicity makes him an incredibly easy figure to hate, but it's through this outsider state that makes him sexually appealing to women such as Sophie. Sophie, Louise's unemployed housemate, is emotionally dependent and cynical, an outsider herself with her faux goth bohemian approach to stumbling through the day to day, initially finding appeal and attraction in Johnny's bitter observations, but becomes intensely attached to him. Even when he physically hurts her, Johnny uses abuse to seduce, preying on vulnerable women who may have a string of bad experiences with previous men, experiences so negative, something which is alluded to during a brief scene of Sophie and Louise in the pub, discussing how men hate women no matter what they do, that Johnny's vitriol seems like a good experience by comparison. Exploring this uncomfortable sexual dynamic within Naked, Amy Torbin, in her essay Naked, The Monster We Know, originally published within the Criterion Collection's release of Naked, wrote that Johnny might be mistaken for a mere misanthrope, so ultra-democratically does he direct his verbal abuse against self and other, young and old, male and female, but Johnny has a special weapon that he reserves for women alone. If he plays passive-aggressive with his tongue, his irreverent wit disarms and seduces even as it cuts to the quick. He uses his prick purely for punishment. Johnny's a hate fucker. Pity the woman who can't see it coming, or who deludes herself that next time will be different. After all, he's so smart, so sensitive, so needy in his anger, so little boy lost under the scruffy beard and adrenalised body language. If Johnny were less magnetic, Naked wouldn't have torn the sexual body politic from London to New York, to everywhere else that Mike Lee's oeuvre was valued. Although Naked locates its subjectivity largely within Johnny, it also allows us to know him in ways he doesn't know himself. From his outsider position, Johnny understands that contemporary society, post Thatcher Britain, at the end of the 20th century, is bent out of shape. He imagines that he resists its authority, but in fact he takes advantage of the patriarchal order, confirming his masculine power by causing women pain. Lee strips the character of his mystique to reveal his compulsive brutality and his badly wounded narcissism. In Johnny's embrace of aggressive hateful sex, a sex which begins rough and blurs the barrier of consent, we view the taking advantage of patriarchal order which Amy Torbin outlines, his bullying, his physical intimidation, and overpowering of women feeds into his misogynistic narcissism, as if his very actions are a protest against authority and rule. After all, he and Sophie fuck much to the displeasure of Louise, somewhat an authority figure, within the hierarchy of the flat, the suffering of Louise in the presence of Johnny due to his bitter chastisement, and the suffering of Sophie during sex, causing a sense of enticement and titillation for Johnny. But Johnny's part of the problem that keeps outsiders outside, he is abusive and vulnerable, and is drawn to women who are also outsiders, women who have suffered at the hands of misogynistic men before, who are pushed aside in their career aspirations due to patriarchal influence, women who are willing to give Johnny a second chance, because they have known men who are worse. Scenes of Sophie and Louise tidying up after Johnny's own fuck-ups reinforces this very clearly. Johnny, as an outsider, is drawn to women as outsiders, and vice versa, but Johnny's own actions are just as guilty with reinforcing patriarchal order, even if he isn't aware of it. Naked contrasts Johnny's own actions and demeanour with that of Jeremy. Jeremy is a young landlord who gains a strong sexual gratification from the suffering of and violence aimed towards women. He actively seeks to make women uncomfortable with his chauvinistic attitude, malevolent lies, and dehumanising nature. Jeremy around women cannot be trusted and he's fully aware of it. He revels in it. 
Further into her essay, Amy Torbin writes that, to clinch the case that Johnny cannot be disposed of by branding him a sadist, Lee also introduces a subplot involving a rich twit named Jeremy, who is indeed a sadist, and most likely a psychopath. Jeremy uses his class privilege and power to subjugate, hurt, and humiliate women. There is nothing ambiguous about his actions or his desires. What is remarkable about Naked is that it reveals who Johnny is, not only by stripping him bare, but also by juxtaposing him with the truly horrific thing he is not. While we may disdain Johnny, we're most certainly not meant to like him. Naked highlights a powerful contrast between Johnny and Jeremy. While Johnny is unaware of his own contributions to a patriarchal society, which brands him and the women around him as outsiders, Jeremy is completely aware and is of a position of privilege and power that he can enforce patriarchal suffering to his will. Sexual violence, squatting, direct intimidation, intimidation, and all with enough money in his pocket that he can walk away from his damages without consequence. Johnny may be a bastard birthed from an exclusionary society with a power divide, but Jeremy is someone able to control the divide. He abuses and leaves without issue. The balance of power plays into Jeremy's hands, whereas as we see Johnny at his most vulnerable, after receiving a beating in an alleyway, crawling back to Louise's home, or in the bathroom, by the toilet as he reconnects with Louise over how they miss Manchester, we catch a glimmer of what drew Louise to Johnny in the first place. A slight sensitivity, uncorrupted by cynicism. We can recognise that Johnny is a victim of his own narcissism and a victim of societal marginalisation. In conclusion, Mike Lee's Naked is an emotionally complex, dark comedy drama that still retains much of what made it disturbing viewing back in 1993. While Naked may be viewed as a problematic film, it is intentionally so, in demonstrating the misogyny women face, and how the exclusionary nature of patriarchy can affect men as well as women. Women within Naked share a relatable fear of men being followed home, sexual pleasure becoming sexual abuse, unsolicited remarks, disagreements becoming violent, a suspicion of a strange man's intentions, and Mike Lee aims to emphasise these fears, demonstrating the damages of misogyny on women and men, exacerbating male insecurities, a toxic culture of control and narcissism, making women the targets of frustration, and how it conjures a vicious, inescapable dread. At its simplest, naked is pure misery. A special thank you to my super Patreon supporters, Gil, Constantin Bombelli, and Victoria. Thank you.